just talk for a minute about internal loads, what's going on inside the beam. And as a bit of a background, let's sort of start with this notion of I have two beams right here. One of them is steel all the way through and has the load in the middle. The other one is steel except for a section in the middle that I've replaced with balsa wood. Clearly, the free body diagrams and the loads on either end for both of these situations are going to be exactly the same, but one of them is likely to break. The material has something to do with that, obviously. It's going to matter. But if I put this same force, F, over here on the steel, this one's still more likely to break. Beyond the material, what else is going on? If you take sort of your old, old, I have a stick that I picked up from the yard, and I want to break the stick, how do you break it? You might actually bend it. And if you bend it too far, it snaps. What's happening in this, this one only has one material, it's, it's oak all the way through. What happened in the middle of my stick? Inside, the loads that are inside the beam are going to matter, in addition to what the material is made out of. What happened when it broke? What I want to do right now is cut it apart so I can look at both sides and what was going on at that break when the stick breaks. It's kind of like what we were doing when we were looking at trusses by the method of sections, except I'm not necessarily cutting just two force members. In fact, when I'm trying to bend this like that, I'm applying a bending moment, which means my stick was not a two force member. So if, let's look at the free body diagram that I had initially. I might have some sort of forces on one side, some sort of forces and moments on the other side. What was happening in the middle? If I look at the rigid body on the left, and the rigid body on the right, anytime I take two things apart, I have to put equal and opposite forces on there. And I know that the inside of a beam acts more like a weld than it does like a pin or something else. It certainly doesn't just bend. So when I take it apart, I have to put two forces in a moment on the inside. And they have to be equal and opposite. We call these shear, axial load, and bending moments. And often, not always, but often, call them V, N, and M. Now, what side of the beam you take depends on what directions you're going to use. And we have certain sign conventions that we use for these so that we can communicate with each other. It does depend on your community if you're in a different set of people that might have a different set of sign conventions. These are the ones we're going to use. V on the left hand side of the beam, V goes down, N goes to the right, and M goes that way, counterclockwise. That left here means the side with the origin. So if you have a vertical beam and my origin is at the top, then that's the left-hand side of the beam. And this would be the right-hand side of the beam, even though it's top and bottom. The shear, when you have these pieces, positive shear is when your beam is about to bend like, or shear off like that. So if you come along in here and you karate chopping this to shear it off, the left-hand side of the beam will look kind of like that. That's the step down, that's a positive shear. A positive bending moment is when your beam is bending like this, like into a smile. And if it's gonna stretch, that would be a positive axial tension, axial load. These three correspond to what happens if you have the system we just had a minute ago. I have like the, uh, simply supported a beam on either side with a force in the middle. The values of V, N, and M are going to change depending on where you look. So if I put V an inch away from the roller, or I put V a 10 feet away from the roller, the values of V and M are going to probably be very different. So what are you going to do? You're going to take your beam, you're going to cut it at the point you're looking at, and you're going to put on the internal loads that look like this, and then solve equations of equilibrium to find out what they are. Some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y, some of the moments. On the left hand or the right hand portion of the beam. Now like before, with frames and machines, it doesn't make any difference whether you do the right hand side or the left hand side. As long as you're following the correct sign conventions, you will get a number that corresponds to these three things. It is worth noting that I want you to cut perpendicular to the surface. So if you have a beam that's at an angle like this, I'm talking about V is perpendicular to the beam itself. And when you're looking at a two force member, we started with the notion of sections when we cut them apart. We had beams that we were assuming were in tension, so you had a load on either side. When you cut one of those in half, 
or anywhere else along the beam and put the sign conventions on here, you can notice that V and M have to be equal to zero. And your axial load, N, is the two force is the force along the two force member. That's going N is going to be equal to AB. That only works if your two force member is straight. If your two force member is not straight, then as you can sort of see right here, V and M are not going to be zero, and N is not going to be equal to that force AB. So when we go back to trusses, you'll notice that our trusses are built out of straight numbers, not crooked ones. As you're working through all of these things, keep in mind that if you want to break something, it is the internal loads becoming too big that correspond to whether or not your beam will break. And principally, when we're looking at beams, we're going to be looking at this bending moment. That is most commonly, not always, but most commonly the way to break a stick. So if you went out to break this stick, you wouldn't put it on either side and pull on it really hard to like some N. That's rarely going to be what would break a stick. In fact, karate chopping might work, but far more often what you will do is bend it.